Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here. I've got my Christmas jumper on and that is because Christmas has come early. We're still in September, but we've got some new firewall zero hour footage to look at courtesy of the new PSVR 2 trailer uploaded from Sony themselves. We've got new gameplay footage of Firewall Ultra and anytime that's going to happen, you can expect to see a trailer analysis, a frame by frame analysis right here on the Petrifying Pumpkins channel. So go ahead and, you know, hit subscribe, because that's the kind of, if that's the kind of stuff that gets you off, then absolutely you should hit subscribe. And uh, look forward to many more videos like this in the future, in the run-up to launch, whenever that may be. But not just Firewall Ultra, we're gonna be covering other stuff, all relating to PS Viewer 2, of course. We're gonna hit play. I'm gonna stop immediately. Gameplay footage captured on PS5 in development for PS Viewer 2. All captured on a PS5. Get ourselves a nice look at the viewer headset and the uh, sense controllers as they're floating around. See, we're finally getting a nice from bottom view of the PS viewer headsets. Although we've seen this in the recent previews, this is where your see through button is and your power button, as well as your scope adjustment button. There's three of them down here. And I think we're getting a good look at the actual light thing at the front. Say, so you see this part here? I think this is a stasis indicator. This lights up white when it's on. I'm assuming it's gonna flash blue when you're turning this on, booting this up. And then maybe if the USB is not connected, but the power is on, it might, be, it might go red or something like that. If I can remember the color schemes correctly. So I think this trailer overall, they uh, did a really good job with it, I think. They give you a good idea of what it's like to kind of be in the game rather than like just a 3D kind of effect. It's the world of Horizon. Four K HD or display. Brings vibrant worlds to life, so not really anything to talk about here. Eye tracking. This one's very, very important. And they've like really done a good job here of like demonstrating it. Like you can see the eyeball, the lens, and then that dot on the right side here, indicating where the pointer or the cursor is basically that your eye is looking at. And they demonstrate this with firewall, which is very cool. As we see here. Detects and follows your vision. We'll go back, obviously. Let's play this at a lower speed. Let's bring it all the way down to 0.25. We see the contractor holding an M4 or um, Taylor CQB, but no attachments on us. And they are, they're holding it with one hand only, which is something, you know, we've yet to see what two-handed weapon handling looks like, and we don't see it in this either, which is interesting enough. Another thing we should notice is that the map is oil rig. So oil rig and bunker both returning, of course. Uh, you may notice differences on the map. Uh, we might have to go to a more in-depth kind of comparison of that to see what's really different. So this is super, super exciting here. We got a new, it's a weapon wheel basically, GTA style, Red Dead Redemption style. Of course, the key thing here is the player is selecting the weapon with their eyeballs. So you're probably pressing the button to bring up the weapon wheel, but once the weapon wheel is up, you're using your eyes to pick what you want. So this person has got the uh, tailor selected. He's looking at the signal jammer, goes across to the grenade, then lands on the T and K handgun. And then as soon as he lets go, the transition from rifle to handgun is instant. So in Firewall Zero Hour, you're pressing triangle to swap your weapons and there is a little bit of a, you know, the weapon goes down, pops up again. Uh, whereas this is like an instant pop into your hand. So, in theory at least, this should like drastically increase your ability to switch through weapons and stuff like and equipment. Obviously, this is another thing I want to talk about. I'll go back and touch here. What's interesting about this from a gameplay point of view as well, not just like technically the eye track and stuff, is that we've got single jammers and grenades as their own separate equipable things. So it sounds to me like let's say you pick grenade, for example. The handgun disappears and the grenade is in your hand instead and then maybe you're throwing us or maybe there's a button press to throw us so you start aiming us or likewise with the uh, signal modifier or signal jammer you equip that and then maybe you're just holding that in your hand and you manually have to place that in the world rather than it being a, a button 
prompt or could be it could be a mixture of both but either way it seems that you have to physically be holding the thing rather than having this as like a hotkey item you know it was these things were mapped to l1 and l2 in firewall zero hour and of course we've got less buttons on the sense controllers now so maybe this is like how it has to be to make up for that it remains to be seen like it would be really nice if they equipped the grenade here so we could see what that actually looks like but we don't get to see that so we're kind of still left in you know a speculation kind of a land with that no man's land we can't you know decide one way or the other yes and as you can see it does like a cool little split screen so if you look at the left this is your eyeball and it's kind of giving you a, a live play-by-play -play of how your eyeball is going to be moving and actually actually moving around in this video of um, selecting the weapons as well like they match up one to one so you look in the signal jammer move to the right so looking at the grenade down to the handgun and then releases to select the handgun basically foveated rendering and this is a good sample this is exactly uh exactly what i wanted to see uh, a good graphic to demonstrate what foveated rendering is if you see in the background here this circle is hyper focusing on the triangle square whatever them shapes and then everything around us is kind of blurred but that doesn't matter because that's all you're going to be looking at in the game this part you're not going to be able to see that anyway it will be naturally blurred by your eyesight because your eyes can only focus on it one spot at a time so that's a good demonstration a good way of showing that off from sony as it moves around the screen and uh they use firewall here for that now again we're on the oil rig map both of these contractors are equipped with flashlights we got some stuff to digest there so we see three contractors can we figure out like they're not very well lit they're kind of like silhouette contractors moving through the oil rig map we've got a staircase here which i'm wondering is this something i've seen before because oil rig does have two levels it has the underground level it has the above ground level where you got these offices and uh the big tanks and whatnot and then there is like an upper level in the map that you see but you don't actually interact with now maybe is this staircase leading up to that or am i completely mistaken maybe you're already on the bottom level here i need to go back to the oil rig map and you know study it more to see the comparisons so yeah it's hard to see who this first person is at the top in the shadows second person with the silenced handgun kind of reminds me of fang his perk is quick hands i believe the quick reloading guy you see you got these effects going on on the left the steam going along you can see the flashlights simultaneously lighten up different aspects of the map and i think they're showing us here you can see it's like a kind of a a blurred effect on the edges and maybe it's a lot sharper over here compared to this and that's the fulvius fulvius had rendering going on so perhaps you're looking through the eyes of the fourth teammate that you don't see walking across this uh walkway in comes the third third teammate enters the scene seems to be wielding a shotgun with a flashlight attached kind of illuminates the back of the second contractor which kind of reveals the same kind of hairstyle as fang or fang is it fang or fang i think it's fang all of a sudden the first contractor is getting into more like a well-lit area so they're looking more identifiable and it appears to be a female contractor yeah it's hard to tell for sure who these are i think the first one i mean keep in mind if they're returning contractors they've gone through redesigns or remodeling and stuff like that so they might not have the same designs that we're used to uh, this contractor seems to be wearing shorts so you, the legs are exposed and i don't think there was any contractor that did that in firewall zero hour so that's a new look even if it is like a texas or a jag or whoever second one i mean could be fang could be skip and then this third one then maybe he's fang i mean i can't be conclusive about the identities of those contractors and of course there's also the consideration that there's brand new contractors coming into it as well thus we don't know about what they look like so you know it's a wait and see next up to touch on the 110 degree field of view let me speed up this back to normal speed until we get some more interesting stuff not that this isn't cool or interesting and they show off some no man's sky with a wider field of view finger touch detection this is where we get some firewall back again uh let's slow it down but not as slow as before let's just get like a half speed for tactile interaction let's mute that because it sounds awful so keep an eye on the finger here boom this is your real finger in real life doing this you take your finger off the trigger it will detect where your finger is so you can give it a you can practice 
trigger discipline, which is a real technique that, you know, special forces and army and whatnot, they're trained in this all around the world. You don't want to put your finger on the trigger unless you're absolutely ready to shoot. So they will often have their finger like that, like it was here. That's how you tell someone is trained and using a weapon. And what's nice about that as well is that it's not just like a quick snap. You know, it's a nicely animated bend of the finger onto the trigger. And it looks really, really nice. And they say it's for tactile interaction. Now, what contractor is this? Again, I have to guess it would probably be Okoro. Again, on the oil rig map. And we just get a little look of what it's like to aim the gun. Just the way the gun is moving is more natural, more realistic to how it would be in the game compared to the other trailer they did where it felt a bit more cinematic, like things were a bit more scripted. The way the camera was moving and stuff like that felt a bit more scripted than this, which looks like it's actually taken from proper 100% gameplay. And you can just look at the details. Look at the skin texture on Okoro's hands. The TNK handgun he's holding here looks meticulously modeled. Now, if you're wondering about manual reloading, Hess Barber did comment on the last video I did, and he put a pretty definitive response in the comments saying that uh, there will not be manual reloading, he reckons. Well, I'll put the comment he put up on the screen. He seems to be suggesting that that would impact the fun levels of the game. My interpretation of that is, you know, you might be fumbling around trying to get your magazine in the gun and cocking it and reloading, and then you get shot. And because of that, you get frustrated rather than having fun. And then the flip side of that is pressing a button guarantees you an automatic reload every time. Now, of course, this is more of a divisive situation where I feel like a lot of people are going to be, you know, there's going to be some pushback to that. I think that, you know, people like the idea of manual reloading. And for those people to hear that will be a negative. But what this also allows for is the potential for third party or even official stocks or frames that allow you to put the sense controllers together into a more traditional two handed weapon. Because if you've got a button press, then all of a sudden you don't need separate hands. You can have them fixed, basically. However, because of the weapon wheel, we've seen the grenade and the signal jammer seem to be separate things. Maybe you will need to use your two hands to place those or whatever. I mean, it all remains to be seen. Things are still way up in the air. And I will have to wait for further gameplay or blog posts or update from First Contact Entertainment to clarify these kind of things. Some volume back. Nothing you can really say about that. So, of course, this is confirming that there is basically rumble in the headset itself, not just the controllers. You'll feel things on your head. So keep in mind, you know, what kind of things would Firewall use that for? I think a great one is obviously headshots. You know, if you get shot in the head, you feel like a that could be like a really cool thing. Or maybe as Decepticon pointed out if you maybe tap your gun on somebody's head they'll feel a little tapping or something like that that could be fun and they show the example here of the flies buzzing around your head in resident evil a's and that will like vibrate more subtly uh, from what i've seen of previews haptic feedback of course same as the dual sense saints and sinners showcasing that This was a really proper, sexy, high polished look at the PSVR 2. Like, this is kind of what I feel like it should have been revealed as, not just like blog posts and stuff like that with a picture of it. I kind of wish this came a bit sooner. Feel a new reel seems to be the tagline for PSVR 2. I like it. It rhymes. It uh, rolls off the tongue. It goes alongside play has no limits for PS5 or greatness awaits from PS4. I mean, they did mention this in the blog post when they were talking about Firewall Ultra, how they were going to have eye tracking that would let you interact with HUD elements. Maybe that's not the specific word they used. This is a, a clear demonstration of what they were talking about. And of course, the mind can race now. And what else this will do? Are the eyeballs of the characters in the game, if you walk up to a teammate, are you going to accurately see where their eyes are moving? That's going to be cool. That's going to add something, another layer, even if it's a small layer of... Not only the sense of presence, but possible communication. You're like, uh, you know, if you want to roll your eyes at someone or something like that, maybe wink at them. The possibilities there are quite crazy. And that's just with eyes. I mean, this could be something that once you get used to us, once you get good at us, you're rapidly changing weapons like that. 
raises more questions as well as in, you know, have they used eye tracking for other elements of this game? Some people in the comments, I'll try and get one up on the screen, have suggested that maybe eye tracking could be used to help you throw grenades and stuff. We've seen in Horizon, or at least we've heard in previews, that it might be aiding you like an auto aim type thing or aim assist type thing rather if you're looking at where you want to aim and it kind of makes you more accurate. Maybe something like that could be done with throwables in Firewall Ultra. I mean, you could even design game modes around where the character is looking. You might have to look at certain things or whatever. I mean, listen, I'm not a game designer, but I'm sure there's like cool things that could be done with this technology outside of foveated rendering, which is already in itself a game changer. Yeah, I'm just looking at the steam on the bottom left corner here. So in the bunker, they showed off a little detail, like insects and stuff crawling along the floor. And on oil rig, we've got like steam vents and stuff going on. Like it just adds a lot more to these maps that we're kind of know and love. And of course, the blog post indicates that while the maps could be returning, like a lot of the maps might be returning, as well as new ones, of course, but they're, maybe they're keeping those a surprise for later on, that they will be expanded or changed in some way. So maybe this staircase here was blocked off before or something like that. Listen, if you know better this map than me, I mean, a lot of people do. I mean, listen, my map knowledge of Firewall Zero Hours, particularly the newer maps, is not where it should be. I can get lost in these maps, so I wouldn't say with 100 degree certainty or 100% certainty that, you know, that's definitely a new staircase or that doorway there didn't look like it was interactable before, like maybe this door opens. But to my eye, anyway, this area here does look like it's rendered in higher detail than this area over here. And that which would make sense because they're talking about foveas at rendering and this is what they're using to highlight it. So, of course, if you're streaming Firewall Zero Hour, there's a good chance that that's what's going to look like when you're streaming, that people will be able to tell by the sharpness of the image where your eyeballs are actually looking. So if you're looking at, let's say this is Texas, if you're looking at her, her bum, you know, if that's the highest detailed rendered thing going on, then people are going to know what you're looking at. You got to watch out if you're a streamer anyway. I wonder, is it going to be possible to not equip any weapon in firewall and then just have bare hands and then be able to like do all kinds of gestures like i mean who knows what kind of gestures you could do with your finger i'm not going to put any ideas in anyone's heads but that would be cool as well like uh, even like you know just pointing just pointing somewhere uh could really enhance things i mean you're using a handgun uh his other left hand must be free unless maybe you can dual wield with a knife or something like that but surely that hand is free to make gestures even if you can't unequip any weapon at all I mean, I don't know which excites me most. I mean, I guess this should be another example as well. He's definitely focusing on the gun, and the gun does look really crisp and sharp and detailed. However, the rest of the scene is so dark, it's kind of hard to know if the foveas and rendering effect is, you know, really in effect here. I mean, it probably has to be if foveas and rendering is being used, but it's kind of hard to discern us, especially when you're watching a 1080p YouTube compressed stream. It kind of makes it difficult. But yeah, look at the detail of that gun. And so far, that's the only gun that they've showed up close, that TNK pistol. We've seen it with the suppressor, now we've seen it without the suppressor, and we've seen it with a flashlight as well. What annoys me about this part is that I don't know who's who. We've got a female contractor in the front, and then two males on the on the rear. Presumably, we're the fourth one, the fourth teammate, if they're sticking to 4v4. That could be a clue to indicate that it is 4v4. And again, you just see all these shadows moving around the place. It just looks really, really nice. Players cast shadows going to really afford to for the mouse to be made much much darker and much more atmospheric so yeah that is it for this video lads and ladies this kind of analysis frame by frame analysis and um, there's a good chance i missed stuff here because again this is like just on me this is my first chance to get onto the laptop uh, look at this on a bigger screen i will look over this again if i find anything else I will, of course, make another video about this. Uh, another thing, I already mentioned it, but an important thing to know. So let me know what you think about the eye tracking. Is this going to be like a really, is this going to be some kind of a game changer, you know? Or is it just like a novelty thing, maybe, in your opinion? And of course, the finger tracking. Is that something that excites you, uh, et cetera, et cetera? Let me know in the comments below and we'll talk about it. I hope you're all as moist and excited as I am over Firewall Ultra. Again, we don't know when it's coming out. Fingers crossed it'll be close to the launch of the PSVR 2 itself, which is early 2023. Thanks for watching, lads and ladies. Please stay nice and moist. <laughs> <laughs>